So I'm, I'm Jim O'Rourke. I work at the Energy Group. We're out in Lakewood, actually, in Belmar, for any of you who like to shop at all those cool shops out there. And um, I, I've been with Energy, actually in my third, well, I'm going into my fourth year, three years of Energy, and I am a VP, so I head up our media team. And I've um, known this for a long time, and you said some baby or something. But, um, but the programmatic you know, space is, is something we've just been delving in just the past few years. Uh, and it's amazing the, um, the acceleration of it, right? I was looking at something the other day that said just the spending in programmatic right now. I'm surprised it was a little lower than I thought. They said, I think about 25%, this was an e marketer said, 25% of digital dollars are programmatic. Now it's 50% higher than last year, three to four times higher than it was a year ago. So it's not slowing down and people are becoming more and more comfortable with it. So it is another way of life. But you know, from working in this business a while, you know, there were you know, seven years, the changes in television or print were minuscule and the changes, I'm looking at Jeff, I mean, we worked together about eight years ago and none of this it was really existed, right, Jeff? It was that, yeah, that was... We were dabbling a little in digital stuff, but nothing. It was the advent of iPhone. That was the big thing. Smart yeah. just came on the scene. Right. So it's amazing how this continues to transform and, uh, and grow. So, yeah, that's my background. Um, you know, happy to chat with you guys afterwards, too. But it's my show, so I'll let them ask some questions. Hopefully, I won't scrub the answers too much. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to ask I mean, uh, on, Yeah, second professor. I'm going to leave it off with uh, one question just for Jen, and then uh, we might open it up. This yeah, we'd love people yeah. to interact with us. Yeah. Ask what questions. Don't, you don't want to just be talking. Absolutely. Uh, so, Jen, uh, how has buying programmatic media changed your role or your team's role with clients? Okay, so it's an interesting question because, as Mike described in the front, Programmatic, it, you know, the, the basic definition is it allows us to do things, um, you know, using technology so it should make our jobs more efficient. You would assume it would um, save us some time, but he also showed, I thought that was a great slide. It, it, it truly is complex. Again, having been in media for so many years, way, way back in the day, you could throw out a few terms, and that was complex to a lot of clients, you know, uh, uh, other people we were working with, what's a GRP, a rating point? But now it truly is incredibly complex. And what I find is interesting about it and how it's changed our role, especially with clients, is you know, back in the day as a media expert, clients, good clients will ask you good questions, they're invested in the process. But for the most part, they kind of let you do what you're doing. Is, you know, they, they kind of what you do is a, a big specialty. You know, we, 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 we trust you, but we also know we can't do it ourselves. And what I'm finding now is because programmatic, uh, just the idea of being, you know, having all this technology that allows us to drill down uh, in target audiences and the way we buy media is so different than the way it used to be, I find that where it's very complex, it still many clients might be a little hands off because they're intimidated by it. The change I see is clients are more and more getting into the weeds with us. And I think a big part of that is because there's so much data to be pulled from uh, digital and programmatic buying, whereas in the, you know, in the past, and still today, you, know, you do TV buys, it's not data coming in from that per se. It can start to happen because all media is going a bit slowly programmatic. But there's so much data, clients are more invested in really trying to understand what we do and be a partner versus you do that, and if sales are good and if I got the sales or the sales look the next month, I'm fine with it. So I find what's changed is, although it's a much more complex job, and clients rely on us so much more now, um, you, you know, to make to make hard decisions for them. They're also just a lot more um, invested and engaged with us too. So our job is a little different because we find clients are are, are digging in and, and spending a lot more time understanding us because they're so concerned with how data is going to affect their business. So they understand they're hiring someone to help them with that. But they can't have this hands-off approach. Just do it, and if you hit the goals, I'm happy. They really are much more involved in this side of the business, I think, than they would be for a typical TV buy or print buy or a, you know, an outdoor buy. Uh, is this a trend? Uh, is this where's this headed? And how do you balance? Um, 
Well, the churn question is interesting because, you know, and I, I, I read a lot every day about, and there are clients bringing programmatic in-house where they're actually not working with us or agencies like us. So, and, and that's still right now really just really big clients. The, um, you know, Kellogg's has been doing it for a while. Kellogg's. But even we work with Kellogg's. We do a lot of different work with them and we still engage with them in a lot of things. But they've got a programmatic in-house group. And so some of those really large clients are pulling things in-house, and it's all because of the data, and they're hiring some people. And I think there's always a balancing act with that, because there's still, hopefully, there's still an art and media planning and buying, and there's a value beyond just data-driven decisions. So you, you want someone who can kind of combine that art and science. But I think one of the trends, some of it's coming in-house. I think uh, I saw some recent, uh, a sur survey the other day said about 15% of programmatic media is being pulled in house to client side. 85% is still happening for agency or you know, partner relations. Um, so, I mean, that's a bit of a trend, but um, you know, I think the bigger trend is that clients are, uh, they, they are testing more, they're investing more. And they are working and asking agencies to help them manage that data and help them find those nuggets and insights that go beyond just doing media. And it's helping, you know, it, it, it circles back to helping with insights and marketing insights to, um, you know, to continue to, to make that circle of life or circle of marketing, if you will, work better and stronger. So that's a difference too. That's, I guess, a bit of a trend where, from a media standpoint, it was about planning and buying. And now it's just a much deeper dive into marketing and being kind of a co-marketer with your clients. And I think, you know, many people have been around and do it for a while, Jeff, people in the room, you know, have been able to stay on top of that trend versus some, you know, we've seen a lot of change in our business and people kind of <clears throat> fall out of it because they weren't comfortable with that. So uh, it's an interesting, especially the past five years, I would say, I think it's been very interesting just to see the change our and it's the, kind of some of the type of people we have in our business. Yeah. Well, from the audience, I'm sure that lots of hands. This can be through the mic or Jim. With automation become, comes opportunity for fraud to be prevalent. How are either of you combating that challenge? I'll start. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot out there, and there's a lot of bad people out there that are trying to make a quick buck. Uh, uh, video is even a little bit more prevalent because we see the engine so high. Uh, at rating one, I can only speak for what what we're doing, and you know our our campaigns that we run for advertisers all across the board, whether it's Disney, American Express, whoever it might be, are looking for some kind of uh, result, some kind of back end metric. Right? And if a, if a robot or, or, or some kind of fraudulent click or traffic um, is seeing or clicking on that ad or whatever, um, that's not good traffic for us. And so we can, we can sit back and, and act like it's not a problem or we can rely on the advertiser to implement uh, third party sources to say that, hey, this is fraudulent and that's not fraudulent, we'll pay for this and we won't pay for that. And that does happen and we partner with those people. But we do a ton of our own investigative work behind the scenes because we can't have that. Like, if we want to beat our competition, and I named some of the names earlier, um, we need to have less fraud than that, to be really honest with you. Because um, then our stuff's going to perform. Uh, we're going to be in a much more clean, well lit space where people are converting in the way that that advertiser wants them to convert. Um, and so we've done, uh, I forget who I was talking to earlier, we did something recently where um, programmatically we were in the exchanges bidding on some mobile inventory for a particular advertiser. Uh, and we're all the time looking for any kind of anomalies that might set off kind of alarm to us. And we saw, you know, so whenever we see like on particular sites or publishers that, wow, the CTR just looks a little too high, right? That's, well, that's great, but maybe that's not great. Let's look into this. Um, we looked in this mobile campaign I'm referring to at just black long data, right? And 
we noticed that over the Atlantic Ocean, there was this huge grid of all these bid requests coming in over the Atlantic Ocean. Right? So whoever this company was that was out there putting impressions available to the exchanges, uh, to us, and to our competition, um, they had gotten really lazy, and the coordinates that they had put in uh, on the bid request or on the bid call um, were just this, this, just you know, X Y Z X Y Z over the Atlantic Ocean, and unless there's some huge cruise ship out, I was just a carpet, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and we we knew we were like, okay, well, and, and so what we do in that case is we blacklist that publisher. In this case, obviously, we're going to report that publisher too, because we don't need other people dealing with them as well. So, so we're doing a lot of our own work. Um, you know, it's often said that, you know, whether it's the FBI or us or whoever, uh, the criminals are typically one step ahead, right? And we're usually playing catch up. Um, <laughs> so I hope that's not too much the case, but there's a lot of money to be made out there. And if someone can get a quick buck and get away, they're going to do it. And uh, it exists. Uh, I don't like it. No one likes it. Um, we're doing everything we can. Yeah, um, as far as fraud goes, yeah, I found, we found that um, every client is different. We, you know, we're in the business at an injury, any agency, and any end we're consultants for a client, and hopefully we're on top of trends and we're able to educate them. Um, but old habits die hard, so, and I won't name any clients, because we have a wide variety, so you have to guess who might be wrong. But some clients, uh, we, 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 over the past two years, we've done some pretty deep dive educations on fraud, on durability, on all of these factors. Now, and, and educating them on uh, how that happens, ways to buy media that can mitigate that, you know, uh, as Mike said, there are uh, third-party companies that can help us with that. And for the most part now, pretty much all the buys we do, we're using some third-party company. Uh, typically, uh, and again, it's interesting, when some cl clients still are trying to write their heads around, I have to pay for that? Well, not necessarily, but we'll talk to them about that and say, we think it's in our interest to really make better buys to do that. But most vendors out there will work with us on that, and they're you know, reputable companies. Like rating one and others will say, you know, we'll help you with that or whatever. Everything's negotiable, right? Um, definitely want to make the client uh, comfortable. So, but depending on the client's objective, sometimes, especially in the direct response space, we found we we understand we're getting fraud, but you know we're all in a business, and, and while companies are trying to weed out that fraudulent inventory, there's a give and take of what, but that good inventory that's left, you know. Common sense tells you it probably does cost a lot of money. And some clients are like, but I don't want to raise my CPM or my cost for click or my cost for engagement. So there's a balancing act. And, and we found all we can do is educate our clients on that, help them. We've, we've really strongly recommended going for more advanced metrics to measure um, success beyond that. But sometimes you still have to use those data points because there's a comfort level of leasing. But um, in working with them, uh, is making it clear that uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna buy media for them in whatever way ultimately drives their business. And we found in some cases we know we're gonna get X level of fraud, but we're still at the right price at our cost per conversion. We have the right conversions in place. Some level of fraud somehow it, it works, right? So we're okay with that when it's more of a branding campaign or. You're trying to get other kinds of engagement with consumers because you're looking for a deeper relationship. Then that becomes more of a problem, and you really do have to weed it out. And you have to educate clients that you, you're, you may be paying more than you're used to, or it makes some sense, but there's there is more value. So uh, we always use a third-party, um, uh, you know, verification companies for all of our. I certainly recommend it for all that. Uh, viewability is another challenge, and again, partners out there who can. Help with that, or just some level of that, and get any data, any research matter than none. If you're working with multiple lenders, you can need some, some, some information from that that helps determine, um, you know, what, you know, the value of uh, exposures that are not tied to a direct clip. Um, I mean, attribution is kind of the best way to get there, but that's still a work in progress. 
uh, I know one of the things we talked about in question would be what would I love to see for the future. I'd like to see you know, at least the attribution companies just that price come down where it becomes a much more uh, easy thing for more clients to start to uh, really take advantage of. Because that will uh, be, I think, a game changer when you get a lot more scale in using, you know, in, in big attribution models being just used by a lot more clients. So, It'll start, I mean, the business has changed a lot already, but it'll start to change and you know, rely on some really old school, just like sort of, you know, some old school metrics that are, you know, not indicative of what all of our advertising is doing. Not to mention something like just literally fraud, fraudulent, because um, you know, that, that's an easier thing to be fraud by. Let's maybe do one more question. Yeah, absolutely. I saw another question over here. Conversion information and any kind of reporting coming from the traditional mediums, and they're moving more towards digital, or is that not really happening yet? So, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know if you get I can hear you perfectly, but yeah, maybe close to close. Um, there you go. Okay. There you go. Or the clients that we work with traditionally, um, as they test digital. Uh, advertising methods, are they getting frustrated with the reporting that they're getting from your traditional methods and moving more towards digital? Yeah, I guess the, the, the answer of oh yeah, that's happening would be an interesting and a good one to get, but, but frankly, I still think it's a it's a long-term learning process. I think a little bit, but I, I, honestly, I haven't seen as much of it as you think, at least right now. I think, I think client, many, many clients still recognize the limitations of traditional media, recognize the value of it, and recognize it's not there yet. So I think just this whole scale, because the measurement is not the same as in digital, I'm going to move you know, most of my dollars or all of my dollars. You know, no, no, I haven't seen that many clients do that kind of knee-jerk reaction. But that being said, I think there is a case to be made and a plan going forward, because they're starting to hear, ooh, it, it is possible, there is a problem that there, there's the ability to do more programmatic approach to TV, perhaps, or print, or whatever. They're asking more questions on where that is. Is it coming? Is it there? Is a scale there to do it now? So there's a little bit more. I, I guess the other, the other side of that I'd say is with newer, new clients that we're working with, or clients that are coming into the market with new offerings, though, I am seeing, especially when they have modest budgets, you know, we, we like to think from a, a, a nice, well-rounded media mix, cross-platform mix, you like the cross-platform, cross-device mix, but when your budget's somewhat limited, I, we are seeing more and more clients just have to put it all in because they test and test and test. So that's where the more traditional vehicles are losing out with new dollars coming into the market that just aren't going to I think the bigger clients, the more long-term clients who've done things certain ways, certainly they're putting more dollars in digital, but there, but you know, the, yeah, I always laugh over the years. You know, I'd be rich for every article I read where there was a headline: newspapers are dead, radio is dead, TV is dead, display, by the way, now is dead, right? Display is dead. So everything is dead. Well, that's not quite true. And so, um, you know, it's a little bit of hyperbole. But uh, I think there's a little bit of that, but not as much as you'd expect. But I think the clients, which are probably the majority, are modest and lower budgets. Many of them are jumping and putting posts in the digital and different forms, right? That I can test. So I can test some display, do some virtual, do some video. social, negative. And there's so many ways to test when you have a limited budget. You know, that's a great way to figure out what does and doesn't work. And you know, as it grows, and you know, do some traditional. And hopefully by then, be able to program it. Cool. So Jim said it all. So I just wanted to wrap up. Uh, First of all, I want to introduce uh, our, our rep here in Colorado, her name's Christine Lee. Uh, Christine and I have been really good friends for quite some time. Uh, she was in our San Francisco office as uh, one of our top people since the very beginning, and Christine been with us for like five years now. Uh, so Christine's here in Denver now with her husband and her little boy, she has a baby girl too in February. So uh, 
she's your rep here in town. Uh, but thank you guys for having us. I really appreciate it. Anyway. And there are cupcakes over here. Yeah. So. Okay, water bottle. Thank you.